Hi, Mark Reedy here. In this video, I'm going to go over the 90 day inspections tab or user defined number of days. So we're going to go over um, setting up the global inspection interval, how to set that, um, creating the inspection items checklist or modifying the list. Also uh, creating a new inspection, how to uh, view a previously created inspection and how to delete an inspection. And then we're going to go over how to create a work order from the defective items in an inspection. And then we're going to take a look at creating needed maintenance and repairs from defective items in an inspection. And then we're going to show you how to print a blank inspection checklist. And we're going to show you how you can print the current inspection and also how to print the inspections for a year. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're going to start off with the interval. So I'm going to go up here to file and we're going to choose setup and then we're going to change global inspection interval right here. All right. So right now it's set for 90 days and that's how it comes from us. I could set that to 365, for example, and click close there and click close. You can see now the tab says 365. Uh, down here in this area, it says 365 day inspection and the interval is 365 so that the reminders uh, won't come up uh, until you've reached close to 365 days since the last time the inspection was done. Okay, and so let's go ahead and go back and take a look at the next item on the list. And we're going to look at the creating the inspection items checklist. So I'm going to come up here to file, set up, and we're going to choose change global inspection items list. So let me click on that. And from us, uh, Tatum's comes with a list for truck tractor. There is also a list built in for trailer. And there is also a list built in now for bus. I don't know if this, this is a little bit older database here. I don't know if this has the bus, but we'll just go back to truck tractor. And so you can see each equipment type has its list of inspection items. So if we start with truck tractor and let's say you wanted to add something else to this list, you can go ahead and add it to the bottom of the list. And I'm just going to type new item here. And we're going to give it a number of 41. So that is how this is how it will appear in the checklist. So this will be the 41st item in this list. Okay. And so if you want to move an item up or down in this list, you can use these little up and down arrows. So if I wanted 40, this new item here to come up and, and be higher up in the list, I can just choose the up arrow there and see that's moved it up one spot. And then I can just keep clicking on it until I get it to the position where I want it. All right. And what it does is it moves that up and it moves and it renumbers the other ones around it. All right, and then that, what it does, it just keeps moving it up or down wherever you decide to put it uh, with the arrows. The other thing is if you have an item that you want to delete from the list, you choose this little checkbox off to the left here and you choose delete all mark for deletion. So if you checked off two or three of these items and uh, you uh, click on the delete all mark for deletion, they would all be deleted and that would go for any equipment that used that particular uh, inspection items list for that equipment type. It would remove it from the, uh, from the list that they have and any, any previously done items, it wouldn't show up there either. So it will remove it from the list completely. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that. We'll leave that the way it is for now. I'm going to go ahead and remove the new item though. And we're going to go ahead and click delete all mark for deletion. So we're going to click that and it just gives me a warning message here and it tells you if, if a Tatum says it's not responding to just wait it out, let it go ahead and let it finish. 
I'm going to say yes here. And so that is done. And now, uh, what I'm going to, the next thing I'm going to show you is how to create a inspection items list for a new equipment type. So if we come up here and let's just say, I don't know if these, okay, this particular equipment type does not have a list associated with it. So you can see when you have a new equipment type and no list has been created for it yet. Now what I could do here is I could just start typing in items if I wanted to and just manually create a list by typing in new stuff here. So, you know, item, item one, item two, and so forth. And we do want to go ahead and number those in the order that you want them to, want them to appear. in the checklist when you print it out and when you're actually running the checklist inside of Tatum's and checking off the items. Okay, the other thing you can do here is you can actually import from an existing list. So over here on this button here it says copy items from other equipment type. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that and this gives me a message uh, telling me I'm going to bring it in from another equipment type and ask me if I want to continue because if not then I'm going to have to delete whatever I imported here. So I'm going to say yes and I'm going to go ahead and grab the uh, list from the truck tractor. I'm going to click OK here and you can see that we've added all those items from the truck tractor. We still have our other items that I manually added here and you can see we've got some duplicate numbers here so we, will, we would want to clean that up. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and remove these miscellaneous items that I added manually. And I'm going to go ahead and delete those. Okay. And now uh, let's go ahead and close this out. Um, and you can also add, if you have an equipment type that you haven't added to the system, you can add it from here if you want to. So if I wanted to add a... Uh, new type here. If I type something in there and then hit tab, it'll ask me if I want to add it. It tells me it's not in the list. I click OK and now I've got a blank list here with a new equipment type that I could assign to a different piece of equipment. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and let's go to the next item on the list. So we're going to show you now how to create a new inspection. So let's come back over to uh, Tatum's. Close this out and we're going to go to the, I'm going to go back and just change this to 90 day just for make it consistent with what we normally have. Okay. And now I'm going to go now to uh, create a new inspection. You just click on add inspection down here at the bottom, this button right here. Click that. It tells me that these inspections have not been created for this equipment yet for this month and this year. Um, so I'm going to click OK to let that happen. It's going to go ahead and create those. The reason we do that is we don't want to fill up the database with too many items that aren't going to be used. So we're going to say yes that here. And so now um, we're going to go ahead and we've created, we started a new, the process of creating a new inspection. So the first thing you notice here is we have the drop down over on the left for the uh, month and for the year that we've selected. Now when you put a date inspection, it has to match this month and year that's been selected with the drop down. All right, so if I just double click here, that's going to put today's date in. And I can choose a person here. And then we can put an odometer reading in. and. Let's just go ahead and get something similar to what we had in here. 588350, 588, I'm just going to say 500 here. Hit tab. It tells me, uh, ask me if I want to add that odometer reading to the equipment itself. I'm going to say yes. And you can see it's updated the odometer reading on the equipment over here. And so now what I can do is I can mark each item as okay or defective. 
or I can mark them all as okay if I've gone through the list. Say I've, I've, I've actually gone out and uh, printed or printed it out, checked it off, come back in, everything is okay. I could mark everything is okay, just like that. And then we can click on close. All right. So another thing you can do here is I for one or two, I'm going to click on add inspection again. And it does bring up the current month and year um, because it, that's what it does by default. But if I wanted to backdate something, so an inspection done last month or the month or two months ago or whatever, I would just change this here. Let's say March. So now we can see we've, we're uh, looking at the inspection for March 2021. And in here, I want to change this to March. So I'm going to go 03, 152021, and just put a person's name in here. And we'll put a little bit older odometer reading. So 588, 490, or 490, something like that. I'm going to click OK. It's not going to update this because it's a, a smaller or a lower odometer reading, so it won't update the current odometer reading that you would see here because it's a lower odometer reading. All right, and the same thing here, you can mark them all as okay. Also, if you've changed your mind, you want to clear them all, okay or defective, you can click clear all here. And if you have marked something as defective before and it has gone over to the needed maintenance and repairs tab, it will remove them from the needed maintenance and repairs tab. So I'm going to click okay here. And so we've cleared that list out and, uh, and then you can start fresh at that point. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mark everything is okay again. Actually, I'm, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mark a couple of items. Okay. And actually, let me just go ahead and close this. So that basically covers how to create an inspection. So creating a new inspection. Now, viewing a previously created inspection. Let's come back in here. And so I'm going to look at this one from that we did from uh, we did for March. And I'm going to go ahead and double just you just double click it in the list here. All right, and that brings up the one for March. You can see the month and the year and the actual date it was completed. All right, so let's come back over here and how do you delete an inspection? Okay, so to delete an inspection, what you want to do is I'm going to come in here to the March one, and I'm going to go ahead and just clear everything out. So you want to just clear out all the okay or defective items, all right, any notes or anything. And then uh, we want to take out this date here. We want to take out the inspector's name here. And we want to take out the odometer reading and or the hours meter reading if you had one in there. All right, so then you can just click close. You can notice here the 315 is showing. If I click close, now it's gone from the list. So that's how you delete an inspection that was created before. Uh, one more thing about inspections as far as reminders goes is that in order for you to be reminded that, in, that you want to be doing 90 day inspections on your equipment. Um, you go to the equipment summary tab and you want to check this checkbox right here. 90 day inspection required. This is to display them in the reminders pop up. And the reason for that is because sometimes you may not be doing 90 day inspections on a piece of equipment anymore. You don't want it to show in the pop up anymore. So you would uncheck that and then it won't show up in the reminders anymore. Okay, so let's go back, let's go to the next item here. And creating a work order from defective items. So let's come back in here. Let's go to the current one here. And let's go ahead and change a couple of these to defective. And it pops up with a message here, it says, do you want to transfer defective items one at a time to the needed maintenance and repairs tab for this inspection? If I choose no, then you can use the button at the bottom to copy all at once to either a work order or needed maintenance and repairs tab. So if I say 
um, if I say yes to this, it's going to transfer this defective item one at a time as I choose defective over to the needed maintenance and repairs tab. So I'm going to say no here because we're going to do them all at once instead. All right, so I'm going to say no. And then it's not going to ask me again. So now I can start marking items as defective. And you can also put notes in here. And um, on, on each of those defective items. And so now if I want to do a work order from defective items, what I'm going to do here is down here at the bottom, it says copy defective items to work order or open existing. So if a work order has not been created for this um, inspection, then it's going to create a new one based on the defective items. If a work order has already been in, uh, created for this inspection, then it's going to open that work order and show it to you. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this copy defective items. And so we can see now here the defective items have been put into the detailed description area of the work of a brand new work order for this piece of equipment. So now we can we can put in a a short description of this and we can just say uh, something like whatever you want to call it whatever is good for your particular operation but I'm just going to say in this case 90 day inspection defective items so 90 day inspection and defective items and we're going to go ahead and choose that all right and then we can say service by and this could be uh, whatever the common thing is for the work orders um, I'm just going to choose in-house in this case all right so now we have our items down here and and then we can go from there and start knocking out whatever these items are that were defective for the work order, right? Or, or for the inspection in this work order. So I'm going to go ahead and save and close that. Brings us back over to that. And so at this point you can close out this inspection because we're pretty much done with the inspection and we're just going to do the uh, work order on it. Now, if I wanted to copy all these items to a to the needed maintenance and repairs tab instead, um, I could do both, but just uh, redundant to, to do that. But I'm just going to go ahead and click on. Let's go back over here and show you real quick here. Uh, creating a needed maintenance and repairs from defective items. So I'm going to come back over here and choose that. Copy defective items to the needed maintenance and repairs tab. So I'm going to click on that. And it says they were copied over there. So I'm going to click close here now. That does not pop up. You can see here in the needing maintenance and repairs tab, it's showing us a little wrench and hammer showing that there's some items in there that need to be taken care of. And we can show you the uh, items that were copied over from the def defective inspection items right here. All right, so um, at this point, you can go ahead and do whatever you need to do with those and take care of them, and then you can move them over to repairs completed. All right, so that's how you copy them over to the needed maintenance and repairs tab. And so now I'm going to show you how to create a blank inspection checklist. Let's come back over to the 90 day inspection tab. We're going to open this back up and let me go ahead and mark them all as let's do a clear again it says it says you, when you do this you have to delete the work order manually so if i clear all this out if i don't want to use that work order i've got to delete the work order manually so the work order still stays there all right and so i'm going to click ok there and so now we have everything is um, nothing is checked on the checklist uh, we have the person that's doing it. We don't have to have that, I don't believe. And we probably don't have to have the actual date inspected. So we can have these items, these items blank. And so now everything is blank. And I'm going to go ahead and click print this truck tractor inspection. And so now we can print this out uh, just using the print button. 
or we can choose a printer if we want to send it to a specific printer. And this would be our checklist that we could hand off to the person doing the inspection here. And then you can have them uh, sign it and date it at the bottom But the uh, odometer reading, if that's different from what we have in here. And, um, and that's it for printing out in blank inspection. All right, and then to print out the current inspection, let's go ahead and just enter some information here. And so now I'm going to go ahead and just click on print this truck tractor inspection. And now it, it's gonna actually print directly to the printer, the, the default printer in your system. And I'm just gonna go ahead and, sh and uh, I'm using a PDF printer here. I don't have a physical printer set up, so I'm using a PDF printer. And then we're gonna go over and look at that. And that's the completed inspection. And we wanna print the inspections for the year. So I'm gonna come back over here, click on close. And now we're gonna go ahead and click on reports, current equipment reports. And this report for the 90 day inspection is called the equipment maintenance and safety report. Now with this report, you can either preview it or print it. You can't print preview it and then print it from the preview because it is uh, too, uh, it's too intensive. There's too many queries running in the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do the preview and it asks you which year you want to view. So in this case, I'm gonna use 2021. It's gonna show me this one inspection here. And so we can see here, it's we have this column here for May and 2021. We we'll go to the next page. It shows you the person that did the inspection and the date inspected and when the next one is due to be done on. All right, and it does show you your equipment information up at the top. And if I close that, now if you wanted to just print it directly to your printer to show it to a uh, inspector, like a CHP or a DO2 inspector, you just click on current equipment reports and then equipment maintenance and safety report and that'll go right over to your default printer, whatever is chosen as the default printer. Okay, just wanted to go over a few other items here. And some frequently asked questions. So first of all, how many user-defined inspections can you do per month? So we start off with 90 days, you can change it to 365. And these are meant for DOT type inspections. Um, so the most you can do is one per month um, because you can saw that one report, it shows you a full year of inspections. So it's one for every month of the year and uh, that would be the max you can do. In, in the 90 day inspection, you would just see basically four inspections done for the year. So that's the max you can do, one per month. If you need more than one per month, you can use the lube service tab to create pretty much anything you want and give it any interval you want. It could be, you know, one inspection per day. You're just not gonna have the list of inspection items associated with that. So if you do something like that, it would have to be a list that exists outside of Tatum's. Um, so that's basically the answer to that question. Okay, next is how do you set reminders for inspections on a new vehicle? And in order to do that, what you want to do is just create an initialization inspection using the date that the equipment went into service. So just put in the date that it was done. You don't have to put anything was inspected if you didn't actually do an inspection. But you just need to create an inspection so that Tatum's knows when the next one is coming due. All right, and then what happens to my inspections when I change the equipment type? Okay, so those old inspections will still show in the list, but not the items when you open them, when you open that those old inspections. So you gotta change back to the original equipment type if you wanna see those inspection, inspected items list for the old equipment type. So you wanna be real careful about changing equipment types. Once you choose an equipment type, and if you're using inspections, you wanna just maintain and keep that equipment type 
chosen for the life of the equipment so you don't have to go back and change anything. I'll show you how that works here real quick. Okay, so we're going to look at this one here. And uh, right now it's selected as truck tractor. And we've got an inspection that was done in 2013. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on that. And we can see here that we had uh, a few defective items and a few items that were okay. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And I'm going to go ahead and change to a new equipment type. We'll call it flatbed wrecker. All right, and now, so moving forward, we're going to be flatbed wrecker instead of truck tractor. So I'm going to click add inspection. And we'll just put a name in there and put a date inspected. And we're just going to say mark all is okay and close. Okay, so now um, this one here is a flatbed record inspection. And the inspection list could be completely different for the flatbed record than it might be for the truck tractor. So that's why they, that's why you, it, once you've selected an equipment type, it's just going to show you the list of items for that type for the currently selected piece of equipment. So let's go back and look at this one from 2013 now. You can see there's nothing listed there anymore. So I'm going to close that and we're going to choose back to truck tractor. And then we're going to open that 2013 one up again. We want to change it to January 2013. And that brings our list back. All right, so that's how you would do that and bring that back. The other option is to note what you've got listed here as far as you could print it out if you want to. And so you know what you have in the previous inspection, what was okay or defective at that point. And if there's any overlap of those items, like check all lights and so forth, then you can apply those to the new um, list for the new equipment type that you've selected. So we can show that uh, these, these ones may be similar on the uh, two equipment types. Let's close that. So let's go back to the equipment type that we are moving forward with, which is flatbed wrecker. Say yes. Let's go back to the one, uh, let's go back to this one. And now if I choose January 2013, we don't have anything selected. So then I would have to choose mark all is okay, and then I could just go in and choose the ones that were defective at that point when the uh, previous inspection was done. So you're basically recreating the inspection with the new equipment type moving forward. All right, hopefully that helps and thanks a lot for watching. Have a good one, take care.